Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, I'm working on your financial freedom. As a matter of fact, I think the best way to work on your financial freedom today is to get into to a discussion about goals. And I can tell you're thinking, wow, dude, is that all you got? We're going to talk about goals? Yay, so exciting. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. This is This is going nowhere real fast, isn't it? Okay. What if we talked about goals from the excitement of a soccer match? Yeah. I mean, think about it. Do you watch soccer? Now, I'm not a huge soccer fan, but I do watch it from time to time. And I think it's just amazing that these guys, they run from one side of the field to the other side of the field. These guys must run back and forth like a million times during a match. And there's not a lot of scoring that goes on in soccer. Have you noticed that? So when somebody actually is able to execute a score, it's like the entire stadium lights up and you just hear, Goal! you know where I'm going, right? I was going to go really long, but I, I don't want to do that to you. Okay. So that's an exciting component of goals, right? But when I said, we're going to work on your goals at the beginning of the show, man, you probably were thinking about, well, I could go clean out the tool closet or I could do something else. And that's the problem. That's the problem right there. You're not doing what you should do to take a look at where you're trying to go to. And you're thinking to yourself, what? What are you talking about, Al? Okay, real simple. Let me see if I can just shape this for you. At one point in your life, you made a decision to do exactly what you're doing in life right now. Yeah, you made a decision somewhere in your life to do exactly what you're doing now. And for a lot of you, a lot of you, you went on cruise control. You totally went on cruise control. As a matter of fact, you've been doing the exact same thing for one year or three years or five years or 10 years or 15 years. You know where I'm going, right? And here's what I'm, here's what I'm suggesting. You probably had an opportunity to open up an, what we call a retirement account, whether it's a 401k, which may come with matching funds or an IRA or some other quote unquote government endorsed retirement plan. You made the decision to start funneling money into that thing. And one of the things that you're supposed to do is you're actually supposed to sit down with your financial planner every year and, you know, figure out how things are going. But you're busy. You're busy. You can't quite carve out the time to do that. Or if you do that, it's through an email. And really what you're doing is you're looking at, okay, my fund made money. I'm really busy right now. Um, can we keep making money? Financial planner says yes. You go, okay, let's just keep going. So the problem that you have right now is that, you're working off of goals and objectives that may not fit what you need in your life right now. And they may not fit what you need for the future of your life. I'm serious about I, I'm I'm serious as a heart attack. I was reading an article on Market Watch. It was it had it was talking about something called leakage. Leakage is a condition where maybe for whatever reason, you take money out of those retirement accounts. Maybe you have a issue in your, your life that requires money right now to fix. Maybe your daughter's getting married and you got to fund a wedding. Maybe something else happened that you need money for. Maybe you bought a house and now you need money to do all the things that your spouse wants you to do. 
Okay, these are reasons that people will tap into those retirement accounts. But when you tap into those retirement accounts and you pull the money out, it changes the chemistry of that account because the money you pulled out, even if you intend to put it back in, and even if you intend to put it back in with whatever interest rate you've agreed to pay on the money, that money has been taken out of the fight. That money will not produce anything for you because you took money out of that. And that's a problem with these retirement accounts. As, as a matter of fact, the bigger problem with these retirement accounts is that you're saving. Yeah, I hear, I'm using that word savings. You are saving up money. Okay, granted, it may be in something called a retirement account, but you are saving money. There's, there's no getting around that. And the government puts rules in place because they know you you might want to tap that money. It's, it's sitting over there. It's a big bag of money, right? And the government says, oh, we're going to hit you with a 10% penalty if you touch that money. And you're thinking to yourself, not a problem. Not a problem. At the end of the day, what I'm here to say has nothing to do with your retirement plans. Now, what I have to tell you has everything to do with you regaining control of your life. And one of the things that I think you need to do is you need to sit down and, and take a, a serious look at what your goals and objectives are. Because I'll tell you what, if, if you've been doing the retirement fund thing for the last 10 plus years, and you haven't gotten yourself to a place of retirement yet, in other words, you have enough passive income coming in that it meets or exceeds all your bills to the point where you don't have to go to work, then what I'm telling you is that I think you're doing something very ineffectively, very ineffectively, and there's a better way. As a matter of fact, real estate can get you retired in the next five years. And some of you are thinking, I don't believe that. Well, I'm here to tell you, you should. As a matter of fact, when we come back from the break, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about goals and how they will change your life. Stick around. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. So in the uh, 1950s, the early 1950s, there was a survey that was conducted amongst a graduating class of Harvard University. The question, the primary question that was, was given to them was, do you have a written plan for your life? Now, only 5% had any form of a written plan. 20 years later, the survivors of that survey were evaluated on several levels of achievement, and the results were surprising. And I'll, I'll let you know what the results are in a moment. But I want you to, I want you to think about this. For every person you meet, you're going to get a different definition of what success really is. The way a person answers can many times shed light on their strengths and their weaknesses. I mean, they may talk about financial success, but you may look at them and you go, dude, you're 40 pounds overweight. You know, they may brag about their golf score, but then they worry about if they can pay the club dues at the end of the month. You know, another person may talk about how great their job is as they head into marriage number four. Yeah. You know, people seem to think that success in one area means that you have to sacrifice in other areas. And I don't believe that to be true. I don't believe that at all. As a matter of fact, many people believe success comes at the expense of other people. And that's terrible. That's terrible. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of these guys that has always believed in a win-win approach to things. I mean, you should win and I should win. That, that would make a very successful arrangement, right? Okay. So here's the point I want to make. 
there are areas of your life that maybe you are not addressing as effectively as you could. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be nice about this because this is a hard thing to tell you, but it's something no one else will tell you. So I'm going to tell it to you. See, I, I have found that you need to have success in a lot of different areas of your life. You need to have success in your family. You need to have success in fitness, in financial matters, in spiritual, in fun, and any other proposition that maybe you dream up. But it doesn't have to occur at the expense of other people. Del Walmsley, our founder and CEO, said this. He said, you can have anything you want in life, but not everything. So what do you think he means? Well, when I heard Dell say that, I, that I could have anything that I wanted, just not everything, I had to think for a moment. And, and the first thing that came to mind was, well, wh- why, why can't I have everything? Can't I? Can't I have everything? And the answer is no. The answer is simply no. There is one thing in life that we are not in control of, and that's time. There's just simply not enough time to do everything that you want to do. It's, it's just That's just the reality of the world. However, there is time to be, let's say, a professional bodybuilder, go on to win the Mr. Universe contest. Not just once, but six times. And then go on to be a successful real estate investor and star maybe in 20 different movies and then head up the President's Council on Physical Fitness, get married, have three kids, have heart surgery, be the governor of California. Are you getting my point? Yeah, I'm talking about Arnold. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger is an example of a man who has the same 24 hours in a day and he tends to achieve more than we do in our lives. So why is that? Why, why is that? Well, I, th- I think the problem is that universities, bosses, luxury car makers, new home builders, restaurants, bars, clothing makers, all of these different entities out there have other ideas for your life. They do. They want you to work the first five days of the month to pay for your cars, the next 10 days to pay for your house, the next two days to pay for your fancy clothes and jewelry, and so on. They want you to use food and alcohol as entertainment. They want you fat, drunk, and happy. That's what they want. So the lesson that I learned is that there is more than enough time to do everything you need to do in order to be happy, especially if you only do the things that truly move you toward your goals. And just because you've not written your goals down doesn't mean you you don't have goals. Yeah, I'm serious about that. You've got goals. I know you've got goals. The problem is most of your goals are not taking you towards what you want. They're taking you towards someone else's goals. Oh, really? Is that possible? Is it possible you're actually working on somebody else's goals? And this is one of the reasons why you want to write your goals down so that you begin to loosen the controls that the world and corporate America have on you. And I would suggest to you this, that retirement account, that wasn't your idea. That was somebody else's idea that you just went, oh, I could do that. It's better than what I'm doing. Okay. Let's hold that thought for a minute. There's a guy by the name of Mark Victor Hansen. You, you, you ever heard of the guy? Okay. So he's got a quote that I'm going to share with you that I think is important for you to hear. Mark Victor Hansen said, big goals get big results. No goals get no results or somebody else's goals. Oh, maybe this guy's got to figure it out. So what do you do? I mean, are you trading the symbols of success for success? Are you doing that? I mean, take a look at what you're doing for a lifestyle right now. 
Think about it. Where do you live? What's in your driveway? What are you wearing? How many days out of every month are you spending paying for all that stuff? And how many days out of the month are you actually retaining money for investment? And you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I've got that retirement account. We've already covered that at the beginning of the show, Al, remember? And I'm here to tell you this. Yeah, I know. But I don't think you're really in control of that retirement account. Because if you were in control of that retirement account, you wouldn't have other people telling you what you can and cannot do with that retirement account. As a matter of fact, you would be able to tap into that retirement account as you saw fit and not be penalized for it. As a matter of fact, if you had the right kind of retirement account, you probably wouldn't take or pay taxes on the income that retirement account is paying you. Man, this is, this is the neat thing about real estate. But before I get into my discussion on the real estate, I want to talk to you about that Porsche you're thinking about buying. I'm serious. We come back. We'll address it. Stick around. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. Look, I've spoken to a lot of people, and I've, I've asked a lot of people, what, what are your goals? And here's some of the answers that I get. I want to own a Porsche, or... I want a 4,000 square foot home, or I want to make X million dollars a year. Okay. Let me, let me be very clear with you. These, these are symbols. They're symbols. They're not actually goals. They're the rewards of having worthy goals. Real goals are about your purpose in life and how you're going to contribute. I'm serious. Now think about how you make money. How do you help and serve other people? Now, I may sound really idealistic and maybe a little bit on the touchy-feely side, but even though if it is an idealistic thought, it's the basis of a capitalist society. Think about it. We we live in a capitalist society, so it's it's really not touchy-feely at all. It's the harsh reality of true capitalism. So ask yourself this question. Where does money come from? What was your answer? Did you say the government or the banks? No, that's not true. Because the banks and the government have no money. So you have to ask yourself, okay, well, that's true, Al. Whose money do they have? Well, they have your money. It's all your money. Before you even get your check... The government takes their taxes out. Then whatever's left over, you get to use to pay for your cars, your houses, and the other things that all the advertisers that are out there have set as goals for you. Then, if you don't own a business to put your money in, you hand the rest over to your bank. Or you just spend it on things that you think makes you feel good. Yeah, did you notice that sarcasm in my voice there? I don't know if that was a good sarcasm voice. I'll work on it, though. Look, every dime of capital in the United States is controlled by somebody. There's just no big pile of money that's sitting out there waiting for somebody to come and get it. In order for you to put more money into your pocket, it has to come out of somebody else's pocket. And in life, giving and receiving are two parts of the same thing. That quotes from Deepak Chopra. Now, effective goals are as much about giving as they are receiving. You didn't know that, did you? You didn't know that. You thought it was all about you, huh? So what are you going to give other people in return for their money? There's your goal. There's your mission. 
Now, Zig Ziglar said it very succinctly. He said, if you want to help other people get what they want, you can have anything that you want. Yeah, Zig, Zig gets it. So notice the order of the statement that Zig made. Remember that Porsche I was bugging you about? You want to buy a Porsche? I don't know if you want to buy a Porsche. Let's just say you do. The Porsche, which is a want, is not first. It's, it's second. See, you're giving, then you receive. Yeah, when dealing with other credible people, giving and receiving are one and the same. So, what Zig was really trying to tell you is this. If you help enough other people get what they want, you can have your Porsche. You just got to figure out what it's going to take to get that done. Now, there's, there's some pitfalls out there. Think about it. Too many people want to skip the line. Or I should say, skip the joy. That is hard work. Yeah, nobody wants to do, especially it seems like in today's economy, nobody seems to want to go back to work. But I will tell you this. If you're one of those guys that wants to skip the hard work and the service and go straight to the Porsche and the 5,000 square foot house, that's a problem. That mentality is a something for nothing mentality. And it destroys what people's goals, aspirations, and happiness are. It does. Now, don't fool yourself into thinking that because you saw someone get lucky in life or in business that you should or can get lucky also. You might win the lottery. I mean, it's possible, but assume you won't. And start working today to find your purpose in life. How are you going to help and serve other people? Now, one one of my mentors at Lifestyles Unlimited told me his goal. He said, look, I'm going to teach enough people how to build wealth with real estate that I can have the things that I want. Yeah, that's his goal. That makes him get up in the morning. That makes him happy and fulfilled. I mean, he's focused. But you're thinking, well, wait a minute. Doesn't everybody have different goals? And the answer is absolutely they do. Yes, yes. But at the core of every set of goals are the principles of effective living. I believe from reading hundreds of different definitions of success that there are just a few points that are found in every single definition. Now, these are timeless definitions, and some of these things date back 3,000 years. But the problem lies in the fact that many people think that the wrong things get them to their goals. People think that money will give them security. It won't. People think that distractions like TV, music, alcohol, and drugs will give them peace. They don't. Usually, through the advice of others or peer pressure, we link up the wrong resulting expectation to our goals. And that can be a problem. So what we really need to do is we have to seek balance. A balanced approach to success includes the following areas. These, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, these are the seven things the major categories that I think you need to think about when you set your goals. You need to have family, fitness, charity, career, wealth, spirituality, and continued education all dialed in. Those are the seven things that I approach. So let me go back to Zig, Zig Ziglar, because he's, he made a statement on goals that I'm going to share with you. He said, goals are important because you are 100% successful at everything you do. Now think that through. Most people ask questions like, well, if, if, I'm, if I'm so successful, how come I don't have everything I want out of life? That's a, that's a difficult question to answer, isn't it? And you may be in that boat. So I want you to think about that. I want you to divide your goals into two parts. Desires and wishes. Your desires are anything you say you want and already have. Your wishes are anything that you want, but you have not yet achieved. 
And I firmly believe that the definition of success is happiness, good health, peace, and the continued achievement of worthy goals that bring greater happiness, good health, and peace to both you as an individual and to those around you, especially to those you love. So let's, let's take a look back at what you do have. You know those desires that I talked about? Let's, let's talk about those first. How many of you are driving a 10-year-old car with 200,000 miles on it? You probably don't, do you? No, you probably drive a car that costs somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe twenty-five dollars to $70,000. Some of you have a, let's say, a $80,000 SUV that seats eight, but there's only three people in your family. And how many of you are living in a $200,000, three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car home that's about 1,500 square feet? You're not, are you? You're probably in a 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, or even bigger home with four or five or more bedrooms. And, and it doesn't stop there. You probably have a degree from a major university. Oh, I'm going to pick on that when we come back from the break. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. All right, so we were talking about desires and, and wishes as we were going to the break. And and really, desires are, you know, things that you you, you already have. And wishes are things that you don't. And I, I made a comment. I said, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you're probably living in a really nice house. You're driving a pretty expensive car. And then I said, I'm guessing you probably graduated from a major university. And then I told you I'd pick up on that after the break. So here I am picking up on that. And I'm not, I'm not picking on your college or your university. No, I'm not. But I want you to know that the average price of education with the current cost of education, you actually would spend more money and time to get that degree today than I did to buy my first 10 single-family rental houses that are producing $4,000 a month in passive income each and every month. And that doesn't account for the appreciation, which has been incredible over the last couple of years, the equity buildup, or the tax advantages of owning the real estate. So why am I stressing all of this? It sounds like I'm putting down your cars, your homes, your degrees, right? No. What I'm trying to do is stress that those things have consumed massive amounts of your time, your money, your credit, and your energy. You had a goal. You worked. You sacrificed. You achieved it. You are successful. You are successful. I'm not taking that away from you. Give yourself credit that you are successful at everything that you do. Having a degree or more than one degree, I'll be the first to tell you, that's, that's a big accomplishment. I, I know this. I've got two degrees. It's a big accomplishment to get those things. But here's the real problem. Why did you desire the fancy cars, the big house, and the degree, and not the wealth and passive income that would have given you the cars, the big house, and paid for the education to get the degree? See, this is where everything's all wonked up. This is the point I'm trying to make. You believed those things would get you different results. Yeah, you did. Look, your parents, your teachers, your professors, your bosses, and a lot of other people put these ideas in your head. The problem is these people are unqualified. You heard me correctly. They are unqualified to set your goals for you. You listen to someone who didn't have the results in their lives that you wanted. Now, these people are not stupid. They're not malicious. They're probably bright, caring people. But as George Klassen so eloquently penned in The Richest Man in Babylon, you don't go to the brick maker to learn about jewels. Let that sink in for a minute. So starting right now, I want you to take control of your goals. 
You must dictate the source of your goals and not let unqualified people determine your goals for you. If you are talking to someone about how to get to your dreams, don't take advice from them if they are not already there. That is a huge problem. The people at the water cooler might be your friends, but they are not interested in your future. Now, Dennis Watley said, the reason most people never reach their goals is that they don't define them or ever seriously consider them to be believable or even achievable. Winners can tell you where they are going, what they plan to do along the way, and who will be sharing the adventure with them. That's what Dennis said. So remember that Harvard study that I told you about at the beginning of the year? All right, let's go back to it. Remember, only 5% of the, the people wrote down their goals. So 20 years later, the researchers went back and they, they found everybody that was still surviving and they asked them how things were. Now, let me give you the background on the survey. A couple segments have gone by since the beginning of the show. The survey asked Harvard graduates to write down their goals. And what they found was that 5% that they actually surveyed actually had written down their goals. And here was the result. That 5% that had written their goals were more balanced and happy individuals. For a more objective result, and since we live in a capitalist society, let's take a look at it from a different aspect of life. Money. The 5% who had written goals had more money and more assets than the other 95% combined. You heard me correctly. 5% were smashing 95%. Writing down your goals makes a commitment in your brain that simply talking about it doesn't do. It is a promise that you make to yourself. And people with written down goals statistically achieve 20 times the results from their life when compared to people who do not take the time to write any goals down. Now, this written plan, if you review it daily or weekly, can push you forward in ways you can't imagine and give the advertisers and others that are influencing you, it keeps them away from you. Yeah, you, you, you stop noticing things on TV about flashy, shiny things that look like success. And you start focusing on the things that are actually going to get you to success. When Dell Wamsley, the founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, he's our CEO, when he sat down to write the goals for Lifestyles Unlimited back in 1990 when he founded the company, he really didn't look at the goals again until many years later. However, when he did, he noted that he achieved every single goal that he had written down. The power is in the action and the commitment that takes place in your brain when you write these goals down. That's why it is so darn important for you to write stuff down. Now, I, I could get into a massive diatribe, a massive diatribe of why people just don't write their goals down. And there's, trust me, there's a bazillion different reasons. But here's the thing. Whether you write them down or you don't write them down, you've made a decision. And what I am encouraging you to do is to write your goals down memorialize these goals. It is very important for you to understand where it is you're trying to go to. Remember, retirement is not the government's responsibility. It's not your employer's responsibility. No, it's your responsibility. It is all your responsibility. And I'm here to tell you this, with that big retirement account that you have, believe it or not, you could cash in that entire retirement account and you could convert all that money into real estate, and you would probably be in a much better financial situation than you are in now. Because the big difference is all of a sudden, you have access to all of your resources, which you don't have access to in those retirement accounts. Remember, somebody else controls those. But when you control your own money, and you make decisions based on your goals and objectives, you will achieve the results you're looking for. I'll just tell you one of the goals that I think you should have to be retired in the next five years. Yeah, you heard me correctly. To be retired in the next five years. 
Because when you become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited and we teach you how to correctly invest in real estate and you know how to put all your goals together and you put together your plan of action, you can achieve that. You can get yourself to a place in the next five years, maybe even sooner, believe it or not, where you have enough passive income coming in from your investments. And you're using this passive income to offset the cost of living in your household. And when you do that, when you have at least as much passive income coming in as it costs you to operate your household, at that magical point right there, not only have you retired yourself, but you have regained complete control over your life. Because now you, you can make an informed decision as to whether or not you return to that job that you've been doing. Because maybe that job is really more of a short-term goal and not really the long-term goal that you've turned it into. Maybe you're not supposed to be working 30, 35, 40, 45 years on your way to retirement. Maybe you're only supposed to be working five years until you get to retirement. It's okay to retool your mind. It's okay to retool your thought process. It's okay to change the path that you're on. Now more intel from the files of Del Wamsley. Focus on commitment to the project, whatever the project in hand is, getting in shape. Commit yourself to getting in shape. Focus on the commitment. Don't focus on getting motivated. Forget the motivational step. You don't need it. Commit to the results. As we work through the rest of this stuff, you'll see that that commitment to the results is what's going to get you there. Because number two, I think, is important tie-in with number one is that is seek knowledge, not results. Now, what I found is, is that if you try to just get out there and do something, I told you this story 10, 20 times about me going out there and rebuilding this train layout three different times before I finally went to an expert, to a pro, and got all my questions answered because I kept getting into it and running into something a design flaw that was designed into the very plan. So you'd get to that design flaw, when you run up against it, you could go no further, you had to take it all apart and start over again. I did that two or three times. Finally, I realized what I need to do is I need to totally envision the entire project. Look, I'm just like you. I was down the road you were on. I was way down that road. And then I found Lifestyles Unlimited. And I went and took a look, and I'll tell you what, the information that I found changed my life. And you can change yours, too. Go to lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com, get signed up, and let us teach you how to change your life. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.